G'day everyone, my name is Cautious Pancake, and today I'm having a look at the Sky Platform Horde base that is now possible using the Invisible Stability Block Trick from my last video. First things first, let's have a look around the base. We've got this little hangar area here, which we can do all of our crafting and storage. Outside, we've got parking for all of your extra gyrocopters. All of your extra gyrocopters. Gyrocopters. All your extra gyros so that you can pick the one with the color of your choice. Across here, we've got a little bit of a farming area so that despite the fact that we're way off the ground, we can still grow our own food. Got a little bit of water here, and we've also got our power generators out the back. Just going to turn off the lights for the landing strip. But I've turned off the wrong one, so let's go back and fix that. There we go. Heading around, we can see all the lights are off now. And the last building that we need to look at is going to be our horde base area. Inside this shed, we've got a little bit channel here, which is a part of what would be normally a zombie force field. We've got some normal bars to protect ourselves, and we've got some lights up the back so that we can see. To access the fighting area, you need to come around here, head down this hatch to this suspended catwalk, which also holds our SMG turrets. These are mounted below the main platform in case any vultures get stuck. They tend to spawn below where the base is situated. And then we can head back up inside for our fighting area. We've got a wall at the back to prevent us from falling off and a standard sort of fighting compartment with the usual sorts of bars to protect us from the zombies getting through. The base is primarily supported by this this huge concrete pillar and staircase that you can see here. And if we head back up top, we can head around and have a look. The spiral staircase is built around this central pillar and heads all the way from top to bottom, giving the zombies a path to come up to us on Horde Night. Well, that's pretty much a whirlwind tour of the base. Let's head back down below now. We can take a look at the stability of the base and how we're using the invisible block to make this possible. Heading down below, you can see that the base is primarily held up by the central column, but if we turn on stability mode, you can see that this isn't anywhere near enough to hold up the platform in its entirety. To do this, we've got eight invisible columns holding the base up, located near the edges, as you can see by the little green dots around the sides. If we turn on God Mode and fly up, you can see that whilst this does support the base, it's still not the most stable of things. There's a lot of red in there, and if any of those invisible columns are going to get knocked out, then the base is going to come down. However, zombies, as we've seen in the last video, tend to not target the invisible columns particularly well, and given that they've been provided a path up through the central column in the spiral staircase, it's unlikely that they're going to want to target any of the invisible blocks at all. So how does it work on Horde Knight? Well, detaching the camera and flying down, we can see the zombies starting to make their way inside now. We're getting a little bit stuck on the entrance, which is common when you build the sort of non-standard fancy looking entrances I've found. Usually the simplest blocks and simplest pathing produce the most smooth effects for the zombies. And as you can see, they are getting pretty jammed up and doing a ton of damage. We might have to come and have a look at that after a horde night if there's time. Heading back upstairs though, we see we still need to wait for the zombies to show up. It's been 20 minutes so far and there's still no one made it up, but I'm starting to hear them now. Might take some recog since we're just going to be running with the 44. And as you can see, it is a dog friendly setup. The spiral staircase does mean that the dogs can get up no problems. And in the meantime, whilst they do jam up, they will sort of slowly start to filter their way up. You tend to get a few sorts of stragglers here and there and then eventually you'll get a big rush of zombies as the i guess the clog clears down below and they all come up at once there's nothing fancy with this particular setup just got bars and a couple of channels down the side to keep the zombies coming straight at us and not wandering off around the base they shouldn't want to anyway because they want to come straight to us the length of the base is over 11 blocks so they should come inside before they go into any sort of rage mode. Not that they will typically coming straight up the ladder and coming to us, but with the changes in Alpha 21, you never know quite when they're gonna go into rage mode. As you can see, it's been fairly smooth sailing so far, despite my lack of accuracy. A 
For those interested, I'm running on my usual horde based testing sort of setup, which is character level 113 on day 119. But you can see that the game stage is a little higher than normal because we are in the snow biome, just for something a little bit different. And we're not probably going to be doing the full efficiency evaluation on this base because let's face it, anything that you build up in the sky is going to use a hell of a lot of blocks and not really gain you anything other than really an aesthetic point of view. As you can see, we've got a bit of a flurry of zombies here at the moment. Hopefully we can keep up. It does get a little bit tricky when they all come up at once and they spread out like this. Try and go all around the side. Where having an automatic weapon or a shotgun might be a little better. But just sticking with the Desert Vulture for now. You can see that they're starting to do some build up damage on the bars in front of us. So while that's not a bad initial setup, what I might do is take a look at some alternative designs that you might want to consider if you wanted to build a base like this yourself. The first alternate design that you might want to consider is to add electric fences. As you can see, we've got three fences here accessible through this little port in the wall where we can look out and repair them if we need to during the horde. This will mean that the zombies will still get up to us just like they did before, but when they get within range, they'll hit those fences and that just holds them steady as well as doing a little bit of damage. And while the damage isn't much, it does just make the headshots a little bit easier. It also should reduce the amount of damage that they do to the bars in front of us, so we won't have to worry about repairing that as much during Horde Night. Now we just have to wait for the zombies to arrive as usual. It takes about 20 to 30 minutes. As you can see, zombies run straight up, get hit by the fences, holds them nice and still, and makes our headshots easier. I really like electric fences for that reason, but one of the drawbacks for the electric fences is they're a little bit noisy. When you get a lot of zombies, you can get a little bit <laughs> annoyed by the, the constant noise that they put out, as well as the frame rate drops that they can sometimes give you due to all the extra effects. The other thing that I don't like about it for this base in particular is that it, from the outside at least, destroys a bit of the aesthetics by having the poles sitting out next to the runway, just because I didn't really design the base for having electric fences in the first place. So it's always a good option for you to consider. It makes it nice and easy to handle larger hordes, which we'll sure see in a little bit, but I certainly understand that it isn't for everyone. Here comes a group. This might be one of the bigger ones. Let's see how we go, see if we can keep up. Again, the headshots are a little bit easier, just because they hold still. And yep, we've certainly got more and more zombies coming in this time. And if we didn't have the fences, that'd be all over that front area smacking on the bars, doing damage everywhere, but because they're held up, keeps them still, keeps doing damage to them, and gives us that chance to just hold them up, no matter the group size, well, within reason. I am running 64 zombies, and this is insane difficulty, so it's not a pushover. Overall, with the three fences, as long as you keep them repaired, you're going to do just fine with this sort of setup. The second alternate design that you might want to consider is an AFK setup. As you can see here, we've modified the entrance. And if we come around and hop inside the base, since the horde is on the way, you can see that navigating the cat works no problem, as long as you're careful. What we've modified here is we've added a single channel down the middle with a ramp down to a zombie dropper, as well as added in additional channels of the zombie force field to the side, just to make sure that the zombies head straight down that middle path. You can use any sort of zombie force field block, and if you're not sure which ones to use, I do have a video of that, so please check that out after this video if you want more information. Here's our first zombie, and there he goes. And there goes Bo. And that's pretty much going to repeat for every zombie that comes up. We can even head downstairs and check it out if you want to have a look. Just wait for ones to come, then we quickly run downstairs, and there he goes. Oh, sounds like someone made it across. So we'll head back up. Yep. Darlene, which I can't shoot apparently. There we go. 
So most of them will fall down straight away, so it's not a full AFK base. Obviously you could improve that if you added more zombie droppers. We've only got the one here, so a, f a small percentage of zombies will make it past that, but the vast majority of them will just run straight off the edge. bases on everyone's cup of tea and while this one looks exactly the same from this angle if we head back down below you'll see that there's one small addition that makes all the difference and that is the steel door this has been wired up to a switch which if we head back inside and turn it on we'll open the door and turn the base into an afk base but if we want to head back inside and do some combat we can shut this and at a later stage, we can turn that switch back off again and that will shut the door, meaning the zombies won't fall down the zombie dropper. That turns it back into the standard original combat base. Do that now, you can hear the door shut. Zombies will run down, stand on the door, jump back up out of the zombie dropper and head into combat. This spreads them out a little bit. This gives us the chance to melee them if we want and saves some ammo for when we need it. Here comes the zombies now. You'll see they head down, they don't fall, they jump up. And we can melee away. Rats will take a little bit of killing. But if you're running short of ammo, it's not a bad way to try and conserve some. When they come in a big wave like this though, we'll switch back to our guns. Take care of them. And then once we're down to one, we can melee. Oh, the dog's snuck in the background, but he's now gone. And there we go. The other advantage obviously for this base is if we do get a big rush of zombies, which I'm sure we will at some point, we can hit the switch, turn it back to an AFK kind of base, clean up the zombies that are in front of us, and then turn it back into combat. Just to prove that it does work, let's turn it on now, and this next group of zombies should just run straight off the edge like that, and we're back to an AFK style base. Flipping the switch again, Big Mama should come straight through, and we can go back to combat. I like this setup, it doesn't have the noisy electric fences, although you could add them in as well if you wanted extra extra protection, but it means that we can control the flow and the pacing of Horde Knight to as many zombies as we want, and when you can see that there's a big flurry of them coming in the background, we hit the switch, everybody in the background will pretty much fall down, a few of them might be able to stand on the door and jump back up again, but the vast majority of them are going to fall down and then recycle back. Obviously with the height of the base, rage mode's not a problem. It's only the blocks that are getting caught on in that entryway that are kind of doing some damage, but that's not gonna destroy the stability. Given there's so many blocks in that central column, that would have to take out a huge amount to cause a problem. Otherwise, we can just sit here, take care of the horde as we choose. It means that you don't have to worry about too many zombies at once. Just flip the switch and you're all good. The one downside of this setup is you can see just in front of us now that there's a little bit of damage done to that front block there. That's when the zombies get stuck down in the zombie dropper and before they jump back up again they are hitting on that block a little bit or I'm shooting it with the AP ammo so it could be a little bit self-inflicted as well but I think it's mostly the zombies. So that's one thing to keep in mind with this setup. You will have to do a little bit of repair on that block but otherwise I think you're pretty good. I've only used concrete as well, so if you're worried about that block, upgrade it to steel and you're sure you'll be fine. So that's my Sky Platform Horde Base. 
which was a design that I've wanted to build for ages now, but without the invisible stability block, it just looks silly with all the additional support pillars required. Please give this video a like if you enjoyed watching, and let me know what you think in the comments below of either the base itself or the Horde Knight defense options. If you're interested in more videos like this one, please subscribe. And if you've not caught up on the original invisible stability block video, I'll put a link up for that in a sec. Thanks for watching, and as always, happy building.